If everybody could find a seat, please, we're getting ready to start. And the deeper the bow, the more respect is conveyed. So I would like to say, Ohio Gazanimas to everybody. I am Jacqueline Cox's wife, Karen Cox, and I arrived from Japan just last Wednesday for the ceremony, for the Honor and Remember Flag presentation ceremony that we're having today. And I would like to welcome all of you to Washington, D.C. I don't know if this is your first time here, but I can think of no other better place to be to celebrate the 4th of July than in our nation's capital. And I have to admit, when I got off the plane in San Francisco, went through immigration, they had a big sign flash saying, welcome to the United States of America. And I have to say, I got a little lump in my throat, a little tear in the eye. It's like, yes, back on American soil. We've been in Japan for two years already. And uh, it's just always nice to, to be back home. So welcome today. My husband could not be here. He deeply regrets not being able to come, but as I said, we're stationed in Japan at Marine Corps Air Station Iwakuni, and he is with a group of Marines. He's assigned to the Marine Air Group 12, better known as MAG-12, and he's off doing a training exercise with some of the Marines in Malaysia, so he was not able to be here today. We are here today, as I think you all know, to honor our Gold Star families of the 1-8 by presenting personalized honor and remember flags to them today. And you'll hear more about the flags a little bit later. As you listen and watch this morning, I imagine that some of you will find it difficult to hold your emotions in check, and that's okay. I would say don't fight it too hard. The hotel staff provided us with lots of boxes of tissue there are plenty to go around. We're in a safe, private environment, and I would say it's okay to let the tears fall. It's all part of the healing process. So feel free to do that. I think you'll see a few of them from us up here at some point today. Because my husband could not be here, he did write a letter to the Gold Star families that I would like to read. And we had both decided to write something to be read because initially we didn't think either one of us would be here and these letters would be read by somebody else. And we wrote them separately. He wrote his after he went to Malaysia. I wrote mine in Japan, but as we talked about them after we had written them, we both realized that we wrote many, many letters. And we wrote something, tore it up, wrote something else, tore that up. So if it seems a little disjointed, I apologize for that because I think it's a little thought from here and a little thought for there, from there, and we, I try to put it all together. But this is uh, my letter, or my husband's letter, to you, the Gold Star families. He says, I really want to be there with you today for this reunion. However, I find myself once again serving with Marines in some far off land. Instead of ministry in the desert heat of Iraq, we are in the jungle heat of Malaysia. Only this group of Marines is nothing like those who are part of the 1-8. We had something special in that unit, something that will never be found again. Everything I do will be measured against that benchmark I found in the 1-8. Nothing I say in this note can make things any better for you. But I would like to say a few things because my life has been changed since I had the honor of serving with your sons. I was not there when they were born. I did not get to see them grow up, learn to throw a football, go fishing, or go on their first date. I only had the pleasure of seeing them when they were all grown up. I got to see them after they became men, after you finished teaching them about service, dedication, and commitment. You raised good men. They came into the Marine Corps as good men. The Corps didn't make them good. They were already good. What I saw in them was what changed me. For you see, I have been marked. Your sons made a tremendous impact on my life. 
that impact is indelible and permanent. The Bible is full of examples of people being marked by a person or by an event. I got to see some of your sons being marked in a similar fashion to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, which says, Having believed, you were marked in him with the seal, the promised Holy Spirit. I know that I will be able to see your sons one day again, because they were marked by God for eternity. Not only have I too been marked by God, but I have most certainly been marked by your sons. That mark makes me a better chaplain, a better husband, and a better father. Your sons have made a difference, not only for our country, but personally for me. I have stories about each of your sons with me that will last forever. They came into my life and they made a difference, a difference that I will carry with me. That difference will show itself in how I treat my kids and that mark will carry on. So the only thing I can say to you is thank you. Thank you for doing such a good job with your boys. They represented you well and they made a difference. They left their mark. It is and always will be my greatest honor to have served with your sons in service to our country. Yours forever, Dennis Cox. So, please bear with me as I share some of my own thoughts. <coughs> it was exactly a year ago this weekend, July 4th weekend, that I stood before a group of people about this size, except that time it was in the Marine Memorial Chapel on our base in Iwakuni, Japan. The chaplain there had graciously given me about five minutes to speak about the honor and remember flag that I had learned about just a few weeks prior to that. And after I spoke to the group at the chapel about it, my husband and I started to talk about the possibility of us providing personal flags for each one of the Gold Star families in the 1 8. And then one thing led to another, led to another, led to another. I won't go into all the details, and here we are today. Initially, we just assumed the flags would merely be mailed to each one of you because you're all over the country, from coast to coast. We never dreamed of the possibility of a flag presentation ceremony like we're at today until plans started to be formed for this and then again, one thing led to another, led to another, and the idea of presenting these flags at this reunion just made perfect sense. And then when I realized that George Lutz would be here to help present them, he is the, the creator of the Honor and Remember flag and also a Gold Star parent himself, it made uh, the ceremony even more special. As I started to think about what this flag means, which yeah. George will be talking about that a little bit later, but one of its purposes is to recognize all those who have given their life and service to our country, going all the way back to the Revolutionary War. And I realized what a perfect time, this, this day, July 4th, is the perfect time to do an honor and remember flag ceremony since it was this day in 1776 that our country, as you well know, the Founding Fathers declared our independence from foreign tyranny and committed to uphold what they called our creator endowed inalienable rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And since that time, over the past 200 plus years, untold numbers of honorable men and women, you all have joined that group, have fought for these ideals. Many of those who fought so valiantly have paid the ultimate sacrifice so that our country can and will remain free. Jeff Holmes was quoted in the OIF2 deployment book as saying, the price of freedom is the blood of heroes, and how true that is. I read another quote just recently online that kind of extended that thought, and it said the price of freedom isn't only measured in the blood of heroes spilt or the lives that are lost. It is also measured in the wives left without husbands, the children left fatherless, the parents who must bury their children, 
and in the moments and the memories that will never happen. So, we must depend on the memories of the moments that did happen. Those things they did that made us smile. The things they did that made us laugh. The little quirks they had. The little endearing things that they did. And they said, those are the memories we must hold on to. For it has been said that life is not always measured by its duration, but rather its donation. I believe both our personal memories of them and history itself will one day relief will reveal what monumental lasting contributions your sons made in their very short lives. So we must purpose in our hearts to live our lives in such a way that is worthy of their great sacrifice. And we must never forget, never forget their sacrifice that occurred, occurred in just a moment. And never forget your sacrifice, which occurs daily and without end. And believe me, I remember them every time I sing the national anthem. And I must say the other night at the 8th and I evening parade that I think it was one of my highest honors, if not highest honor, to stand and sing the national anthem in the midst of the 1A Marines and the Gold Star families, knowing that you all fought for those colors. I remember them every time I see the flag being lowered and raised, every time I hear taps, every time I hear the Marine Corps hymn being sung, and even though we're Navy, I know all the words to the Marine Corps hymn. I have to admit, I don't know all the words to the Navy hymn, but I know the words to the Marine Corps hymn. Uh, every Thanksgiving day, I remember them because we put out an empty place setting at our Thanksgiving Day table in memory of all of the fallen 1-8 Marines. Every Memorial Day, every Veterans Day, I remember them every time I look at my husband's upper right arm where he has all 21 of their names tattooed in the form of a cross as his personal memorial to his boys, as he so finally calls them and always will. So today, we are not only here to honor and remember your sons, your brothers, your buddies, but also you. Whenever you look at this flag, I hope that you will know that Without a shadow of a doubt, my husband and I love you. We will never forget you. We will never forget to pray for you. We will never forget your daily and oft times moment by moment sacrifice and struggles. And we will never forget to tell the stories to whoever will listen. We've told some of them to perfect strangers because it fit in the flow of the conversation, some of the great things that we know about your sons. And we tell them what fine sons and brothers and buddies they were. And how when our country called, they answered. And they gave their all for the cause of freedom. And thereby they joined a long-established brotherhood of those willing to selflessly give, as Abraham Lincoln so eloquently stated in his Gettysburg Address, the last full measure of devotion so that government of the people, by the people, for the people, should not perish from this earth. And I can think of no finer, no nobler way to observe the 4th of July and no fitter tribute to, to the fallen Marines of the 1-8 than that. So as we begin the ceremony itself of presenting the flags, I would like to introduce George Lutz to all of you today. As I said, he's with us. He is the founder of the Honor and Remember organization and the creator of the Honor and Remember flag, which he will explain in more detail in just a minute. And most importantly, as I told you, he too is a Gold Star parent, which he will talk about also. Interestingly enough, we attended the same church in Virginia Beach, which is where we lived before we were stationed uh, in Japan, before we were sent there. And yet this morning was the first time I've ever met him, <laughs> because it was a relatively large church with different services in the morning and we apparently went to different services. But I received an email a little over a year ago from another member in the church explaining what George was doing with the Honor and Remember flag. And as soon as I read that, 
I knew it was something that was worthy of being supported. So George is here to explain more about the flag and then to present the flags. Thank you, Karen. You held up very well. I don't think I'm going to be as, as strong. First, let me thank you for serving this country as Marines. <laughs> because it is because of you that we have the freedoms that we have. Not only those that didn't come home, but so many of you that willingly went out there and said, I'll do it. I have to apologize. I, uh, before I start, my, I, Karen said, make sure you, you do this early on. My son was a, an army soldier. And, and so soldier is in my brain. If I refer to any of you as soldiers, I apologize. But I do have to, to start my remarks by saying that I found out that my son was deployed to Katrina in September of 05. And he was, his uh, MOS was psychological operations. So he was a PSYOPs uh, team member stationed in Fort Bragg, and he was assigned to Katrina, where I heard that uh, many of the 1-8 were also assigned. And you, you may have run into him. I might also say that when he was in Fallujah, he served with the 2-6 Marines, and it was with that Marine battalion that, uh, that he lost his life. And that leads me to a letter that I wrote to those Marines a week after he died, and I'm going to read that as I open up before I talk about the flag, so you have an idea where my heart is. And I will do my best to get through it. Please bear with me. Dear Downrange Marines, on, De on December 29, 2005, a sniper's bullet claim the life of our son, Tony. This was the most difficult day in our family's life. I cannot imagine a more tragic one. And as difficult a day it was for us, our hearts break for those of you who were by his side. You see, we know how Tony affected lives how much of an impression he made on everyone he touched. That day, we not only lost a son, but you lost a friend and a brother. We do not know all of the facts, but we do know that he died surrounded by those who loved him. Tony was a man who tried to lighten every situation and I'm sure there were many times you could remember when he made you smile or laugh out loud. He was dedicated to his family, a good husband and father, and spent every available minute communicating back home. And when he was home, loving on his wife and children, some of you remember last summer when his daughter Ava was born and how he so appreciated being given the time to leave training to be by his wife's side. He was a good soldier rarely complaining and excited at every phase of his training. Being a former runner, he especially loved PT, accepted the challenges of AIT, language school, and was particularly proud of his army and German jump wings. Tony strongly believed in what he was doing, believed in the mission of liberating the Iraqi people, and in his relationship with you, his military family. He knew why he was there, and even though he fully expected to return, he was prepared for the sacrifice. We want you to know that we firmly believe that he died fighting for those beliefs and in no way hold anyone responsible for his death. There was nothing anyone could have done to more fully protect him. War breeds casualties and many thousands of moms and dads have given their children for freedom's cause. I would like to think that Tony's death would have brought an end, but we know it hasn't. 
Others have since given their lives, and many more will definitely follow. We are proud that he was a soldier, not only in the American Army, but also in the Army of God. Tony had a strong faith in his Savior, Jesus Christ, and always knew his future reward. In fact, one of the last words he wrote to me was, Dad, don't worry. God is literally my shield. He knew where he would spend eternity, and he lived that knowledge every day. God had a purpose for Tony's life, and he took him that day. Nothing could have prevented it. I know that any one of you would have been willing to take his place if possible. But conversely, know this as truth, that Tony would have, would have run to take that bullet, and that day he did. His mother and I want you to be sure that you know that we pray for your safety every day. Keep your eyes open. Be vigilant at every moment. Win that war. And come back safely to your families. But especially, seek after God's purpose in your lives. When your mission is completed, please call or write. Our home is always open and we are welcome a visit. We would love to hear how Tony's life or death was meaningful to you. God bless each of you. We cannot thank you enough for your service, courage, and honor, respectfully. I wrote this a week after he passed away. And over the months after that time, I went through this amazing healing process, if you could. It was a numbness more than a healing, because the memories had ended with him. There were going to be no more memories. So I know, as, as the families here have done, you go out and you covet everything you can find that has anything to do with, with that memory. Videotapes, letters messages, emails, anything you can find to hold on because you know there won't be another one. But after I had explored all of that, after I had gone through the house and figured out everything I could find, I wanted to know what the nation was doing to remember because he gave his life for the rest of the country. And I know that military families, we get it. We know, the Marines especially, they know how to honor the fallen. They know how to remember. It is ingrained. It is so important. But we are such a small fraction of the rest of this country who really don't know what a gold star family is. And that began to bother me a little bit, selfishly, because the nation had no clue what my son had done, what your sons had done. I was one of those prior to that, and that bothered me. And I began to look around, and the only tribute that I could find that the nation embraced was the POW flag. And I thought to myself, what an honor that group had to be remembered with a flag by the nation. It's a mandated flag. And I thought, the fallen be a flag. Why do I feel any different than any parent in the history of our country that has lost a loved one? I don't think I did. All the way back to the beginning of our country. Why shouldn't they be represented nationally with an emblem that everyone recognizes? And the birth of the honor and remember flag came from that process that I believe was God ordained. This is the flag as it was created. The honor and remember flag was born out of military and universal symbolism so that everyone would be able to recognize it. Everyone would look at it and think it was attractive, that it was distinctive even if they had no military connection at all. The red and the white field on this flag, many of you, I'll, I'll explain it, but I believe instantaneously you know what this stands for. 
the sacrifice and the purity of that sacrifice because every one of your Marines went over there saying, I'll be back. They had no mindset that it would be any different. They purely went over there to do a job and come home. The Blue Star goes back to World War I when families hung a Blue Star banner on their windows or doors, signifying that they had someone in action, a brother, a wife, a mother, a son. The Gold Star, overlaying that Blue Star, we know what that stands for, that life that is not coming home and needs to be remembered. The folded flag under this star is a universal symbol. When people see a folded flag, they know that there has been a life lost. And this flag stands for one individual folded flag that each one has received in that life. The flame above it is an eternal flame I hear all the time on the radio. We'll never forget, we will always remember, but and many times it's lip service. The eternal flame and the words honor and remember, we will always honor their sacrifice and remember them specifically by name. <coughs> Thank you, Karen. This was designed to be a national flag. There's a bill in Congress right now to officially recognize this as a national flag. And that's one of our missions, but the reason we're here today is because of another important part of our mission. And that mission is to remember individually those that gave their lives and the families that remain behind. And to let them know that we do care, that we want to remember. And going back as far as we can we are giving tribute to families from every era. And today, you will join us in a tribute today in specifically remembering these brave Marines. I'd like for the flag holders to come up and also the family representatives to, to come forward. Please. Gold Star families, please, please come up. Please take your time, Mommy. Hey, Mommy. Hey, Mommy. Please don't hide around the corner. Please come up. Please. Sorry, just give us a little, a little time to get organized here. I need to explain that the honor remember flag comes presented in a tri-folded configuration. Because like the American flag was tri-folded and handed to you at your son's memorial, never to be unfolded, respectfully kept, preserved in a folded condition. The honor and remember flag comes tri-folded to mirror that American flag, but it's meant to be unfolded, to be displayed, and never to be tri-folded again. And that's why the presentation is this way. We have a certificate that I'd like for Karen to read. We're going to read this one time, and, and then we will proceed. Thank you. This honor and remember flag is presented with eternal gratitude and respect. With this flag, we honor this patriot's unwavering dedication and remember their selfless sacrifice. 
By displaying this symbol collectively as a nation, we humbly recognize the enormity of your loss and respectfully say thank you. As I read the name, if the family could just step forward uh, one step or so. In memory of Corporal Todd J. Godwin. memory of Sergeant Lonnie D. Wells. In memory of Sergeant R. J. Jimenez. Corporal Demarcus D. Brown. Remember your first lieutenant, Dan T. Malcolm, Jr. In memory of Corporal Nicholas J. Chalowski. Memory of Lance Corporal Bradley L. Parker. In memory of Lance Corporal Billy L. Miller. In memory of Corporal Kirk J. Boselman.
memory of Lance Corporal Jeffrey S. Holmes. Gentian Marku. Joshua E. Lucero. Corporal Joshua M. Munns. For those families that are not here today, we still want to recognize those sacrifices that were made and we will call the names of those families who are not here. But still pay the full measure for us all. In the memory of Sergeant Richard M. Lord. Corporal Caesar F. Machado Almas. In the memory of Sergeant David M. Caruso. In the memory of Corporal Nathan R. Anderson. In the memory of Lance Corporal Demetrius Gabriel. In the memory of Lance Corporal David B. Out. In 
in memory of Lance Corporal Bradley M. Faircloth. And in the memory of Corporal Gary A. Toller. Some of you may realize that there are not flags for Travis Desiato and Michael Halal, but I wanted to let you know that their families were offered a flag and they declined for, for personal reasons. So I didn't want you to think that they had been forgotten. Thank you, ladies. You may have noticed that Dan Malcolm's family, there was no one here from his family to accept the flag, and the Alpha Company officers, Dan was part of Alpha Company, as many of you know, have paid for his flag, and in honor of Dan, it is going to be donated along with his certificate to the Citadel, which is Dan's alma mater. They apparently have a display case for all of their graduates who have lost their lives in service to their country, and they already have a few items related to Dan, and now this flag and this certificate will be added to honor him at the Citadel. <coughs> JFK once said, or John F. Kennedy, once said, a nation reveals itself not only by the men it produces, but also by the men it honors, the men it remembers. And that is what we have sought to do here today, is to honor and remember these fine Marines and the wonderful families who gave them to us. May we commit once again to never forget their sacrifice or yours. If my husband were here, he probably would have done what I have been doing, running the ceremony, and I can assure you that he would have closed in a word of prayer. So my husband will probably ask me when I get home, did you pray for them? So I, uh, I want to do that anyway, even if he wasn't going to ask me, but I would like to close in a word of prayer. Dear Father, we are grateful to gather here today to honor and remember these fine Marines. Thank you for the privilege of having known them and for how they have impacted our lives. As I tell my girls every night as we go to bed and say our prayers, that we never have to be afraid, we never have to stay afraid because we know God is always watching over us and Jesus is always with us. So thank you, Lord, for being with us today as you are every day, and for calming our fears and our worries. Heavenly Father, you alone can comfort like no other, because you too know what it's like to give your only son to shed his blood and die so that others may be free. Continue to pour out your peace and comfort into the hearts of our Gold Star families and into the hearts of all the Marines who are still dealing and working through the aftermath of their service to their country and to their beloved Corps. Now, as we go about the other activities of the day, I pray that you would unlock the memories that these Marines have in their minds, memories that only they hold. Unlock them with their fallen brothers so that they may share freely with the families who so hunger to hear yet another story of their loved one, as George mentioned to us earlier. And today, may we hear lots of stories. May we hear lots of joy, lots of laughter, as we share our memories, and as we celebrate this great reunion of lives that will forever be linked together 
by a bond that cannot be broken by time or distance. For it's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. That concludes our ceremony today. Thank you all for coming. Feel free to stay here and mingle, or also the lounge out there, which I think many of you are familiar with, has been reserved for us today. There is a cash bar there from noon until 1 o'clock, and then at 1 o'clock the lunch buffet will begin in the banquet room, which is just down the hall past the bar. If you keep going down the hall, you'll see it. Unfortunately, you have to walk by the food. Go sit down at your tables first, because Sergeant Major Hope is here with us today, and he has a few words he would like to share with us and welcome us before the chow line opens. So go enjoy yourself at the bar, and then at 1 o'clock, the banquet room. Thank you. home that night after the first time we met in person. And Laurent, God rest his soul, was not a neat person. Uh, it was not an ordinary nice person. That's where I came in. And he goes into his room and he starts picking up and organizing everything. And his best friend, Joe, he said, you know, hey, dude, I'm glad you're cleaning, but what are you doing? And he goes, I'm just making it easier for when I move out. <laughs> so we knew. And a lot of people doubted, you know, wait a minute, it's too soon, but I also know that we probably both knew that we didn't have enough time mm -hmm. together, so the time that we had, we made it quick, and he was the type of person that he always made me want to be the best person I could be, but since he passed away, it's even <laughs> elevated to a level I never even thought possible, so he was, he would have been your best friend, he would have given his life, without a doubt, if they had roll call that morning and they said, okay, one of you must die. He would have, without a doubt, said, take me. And um, he was my hero before March 11th, 2008. But now he's the div divine ninja, Jedi master <laughs> hero. And he was an amazing man. And he loved this country. We got married on the 4th of July. Wow. <laughs> because we love this country. We know how blessed we are to be Americans. Yes, my dear. Jedi Master called Star Wars. Yes. Not Jedi. No, no, no. Jedi Master called Star Wars the Clone Wars. Oh, yes, the Clone Wars. Yes, my husband loved all that stuff. So, um, <laughs> yes, thank you, Sean. I, um, he was an amazing man, and I was very blessed to have him in my life for six years and two months. And for that, I will always be grateful. So. Now, was he already? Yes, he was an army brat. Um, his father was an <laughs> army officer. He moved all over. His mother was German, so he was, um, spent part of his life, his childhood in Germany, all throughout the United States. Um, he gave up a Fulbright scholarship to the Citadel. Wow. Uh, his father wasn't happy, but he wanted to join enlisted. He loved being hands on. And, wow. He fought being promoted to E7 because he said, I don't want to put up with the balonies. I can do more with my hands on with the guys and teach mm -hmm. them. And wow. he, he loved what he did. He was just shy of 15 years. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then just March 11th itself was just a, a routine. Yep, they um, were out, called out on a mission, did their interrogation. Um, they had wanted... Some of them wanted to go back to base, others, the higher-ups, wanted them to go do something else. And mm -hmm. Laurent kept telling his lieutenant, you know, hey, I think we should go back, we should go back. The lieutenant was on the radio trying to convince the higher-ups, and they didn't listen. And Laurent's last communication over the radio was, well, sir, that's an A for effort. And about 15 seconds later. Mm -hmm. so, uh, but he didn't suffer for that. I'm just, so grateful. Um, He's a, a sniper? IED. He was the only one that was killed. Um, he was gunner and driver. Both are younger than our oldest daughter. Um, so they became like sons to me. And I was in the hospital every day with them. And 
um, people would ask, why are you here? You know, you just lost your husband. And I said, well, if LeBron could be here, this is where he would be. And mm -hmm. that's my job, to do what I can. Mm -hmm. Went to the green ramp, <laughs> which was the hardest. Um, that was the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. What is the, what is the green ramp, Michelle? The green ramp is when they all come home. Mm -hmm. So um, at his funeral, it was everyone was sad, so it was a little easier to be amongst that, but to be at some place where everyone was so overjoyed to have their loved one come home. Mm -hmm. And I came home because I truly believed there was a part of him coming home for the sports. And I wanted to give a hug to every one of those one of his men, because he loved them. Those were his brothers. Mm -hmm. And that was his family before he met us. And I gave them a hug, and I said, I'm so glad you're home. So what? Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Now, the two other ones, are they okay? Are they um, they both had knee, in, uh, knee injuries. Mm -hmm. um, the one, his gunner, actually just did his first jump about three weeks ago. So he mm -hmm. was thrilled. Laurent was 82nd Airborne, so. Wow. Um, and the other one is out of the army now. So the, physically, they're both well. Um, mentally, probably. <laughs> we were just talking to somebody in the military last night, and can't imagine what they go through. I can't imagine what they see. I can't imagine. Mm -hmm. I, and that's why every time I see a person who serves our country volunteers to do it, it's something. It's just. I, thank you. Because mm -hmm. it's. They're amazing people. So. Mm -hmm. well, we feel like we know him a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know? He was so fu uh, funny. He thought he was funnier than he really was, which made him funny because he thought he was hilarious. <laughs> On paper, he was hysterical. You know, he could form his words and his thoughts and everything. Mm -hmm. Person, not quite so funny, but it was funny because he thought he could be. Yeah. So. We laughed all the time. Um, he was my best friend. He was. He was everything. Mm -hmm. uh, it was, I, I miss him every day. Mm -hmm. yeah. but, um, I also know he died doing what he loved. We both mm -hmm. absolutely believed in what he was doing. and mm -hmm. He actually suffered uh, two concussions, ten stitches. He was diagnosed with TBI two weeks prior to leaving. And he said, baby, I don't care. I got to get. He had to recruit for three years right after everything happened. Mm -hmm. And it was devastating for him. Because he wanted to get over that. That's not what he was trained to do. Just you know, he wasn't trained to sit behind a desk. He was trained to go and help his men and his old unit deploy just a few weeks after he got into recruiting. And um, he wanted to go. So and I always tease him. He was the only soldier I knew who was diagnosed with TBI prior to going to Iraq. So what's TBI? What's TBI? Uh, tra traumatic brain injury. So from before. They were doing PT, <laughs> and he ran into the back of one of. His guys playing football, and they didn't diagnose him with the first concussion, so then they were doing combatives. And this big, huge Texan, who was even bigger than my husband, boom, that second, yeah. So. Yeah, so many of the boys come back with, you know. Right. Yeah, so he was the one I knew that got it before he went over there. So. But he wanted to go. Absolutely. He told the night um, no. when he knew no. when we were sitting on the porch, you know, we got to talk and what happens and what do you want and he said, if God decides it's his time, it keeps us safe back And that was his thing was to make sure we were safe here, that we never had to go through what they have to go through. Madison, are you going to pass? Is there anything you wanted to say about having another stepdad? He was just like more like a real father to mm -hmm. me. Yeah. I'm so glad I could have him in my life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. He would always say, he says, Madison, you know I love you because I picked you to be my daughter and I wasn't just stuck with whatever, you know, came <laughs> out. So That's right. He never called those girls his stepdaughters. He mm -hmm. loved and adored them. Um, he was going through the process of adopting Madison mm -hmm. when everything happened and it didn't go through. Uh, so for her 13th birthday, she asked for her last name to be changed legally to West. So oh, wow. that's what we're in the process of doing mm -hmm. is getting that changed. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's been tough, but she's an amazing young lady. Mm -hmm. 
they were more likely to gang up on me and all that stuff. Well, there's certainly nothing that I think any of us can say that, that would um, maybe help at all. Although, I do know that God doesn't waste our pain. And um, everything we go through in this life is like a risk for compared to eternity. And I know that might be hard day to day, the day to day stuff, but um, anything that we go through enlarges, enlarges our capacity to love more. And um, everyone, you know, the Bible says that we're not supposed to carry. Um, Jesus' cross, but that we carry our cross. And I think everybody in this room is, has had to carry a cross in different ways. And this, is, this is your cross. This is what you've been asked to carry. But you're not alone because everybody carries a cross. It's just different for different people, but... Um, it, it, it'll, it'll, it will allow you, it, it will just enlarge your capacity to love and to have compassion where Absolutely. you never, didn't even think probably was even inside of you. And, um, but I guess that would be just my exhortation, I guess, is that um, God is not going to waste your pain. Yeah. 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 And, and the night Jacqueline knocked on my door, uh, I knew. Said, let me make a positive out of it. Let me do something, whatever I'm supposed to do. You know, let me know. And mm -hmm. so many, it hasn't been an easy road. And it's never easy anyway, but mm -hmm. the Army, God bless them, <laughs> have not exactly been the way they needed to be. And so that's what you were saying. Yeah. Lots of mm -hmm. twists, and you know, it's very mm -hmm. frustrating, but I know there's something I'm supposed to do. And I believe that with all my heart. And I eventually had. Um, the letter I wrote to, um, I write at his service, was published in Taps Magazine. Mm -hmm. And then um, I just wrote an article about how I celebrated his one year. Um, okay. Every March 11th is what would Laurent do day? So instead of okay. sitting and crying and mm -hmm. like, okay, if he was here, what would he do? And right. he being 82nd Airborne, um, I jumped out of an airplane <laughs> 13,000 feet up. Wow. And, um, wow. I was terrified of flying before. So that was not only a tribute to Laurent in the 82nd, but it was such a huge, I could say, look how far I've come in a year. And I got to jump with the Golden Knight, to jump with George Bush Sr. for both his 80th and 85th birthday. So I call Mike my Golden Knight. He's like, Michael. Yeah, I saw on TV the other day, they had um, George Bush Sr. jumping. Wow. And I'm really? Like, There's my Mike. Oh, wow. <laughs> George heard he jumped with me. So wanted to jump with them again. Um, it was the most empowering thing. Wow. I, it was incredible. I wrote an article and it's being published at the um, down there at Fort Bragg and then it's going to be in TAPS in the fall. So um, it, was, it was incredible. So, and I get a big smile every time I, th I think about it. Because everyone kept saying, are you really going to do this? And are you nervous? And I said, absolutely. And I'm not at all. And, yeah. I felt, um, I wear his airborne wings now every time I fly. We never got to fly together. But I know that he's been with me on five trips that I've been on since he's passed away. And I used to not like play. And I wasn't a play. I was the person like, like this. And you're like, any little noise, it was not good. So it was a, it was a great thing to do. Yeah. I was a, <laughs> it was incredible. Yeah, it's kind of a sinking feeling. Out there. <laughs> it was. Well, we went to Bush Gardens a few days ago with yeah, Jason. Yeah, um, Going on the roller coasters, I'm like, ah, this is nothing. This is not I kept telling the kid, I jumped out of an airplane. They're like, yeah, yeah, we know. We know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, you just have to throw that in. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point, yeah. Oh, my God. So at what point does the parachute go out? I mean, do you just you free fall float somewhere. around for it? Like, how long? <laughs> That air, I mean, it, they keep telling you you have to breathe hard and have fun because that wind will 
legit. And you really, and they took, I have pictures, and I have the video. Yeah. We did, um, I told the man, you know, I, I really need a jump mark to 11. What will stop us? He said, the only thing uh -huh. will stop you is weather. Yeah. When I, yeah. yeah, that's true. When I told him why I was jumping, he said everything with the Golden Knight, because they don't usually do that unless it's a big high-profile type mm -hmm. thing. Um, they did the video and the pictures, and he would not charge, he wouldn't charge me. Wow. He said, when I went to go pay, he says, but your husband died to give me the right, right. to do what I want. Mm -hmm. And since then, I have already inspired five, five other widows to come. <laughs> Wow. And they're doing a gold star mother widow thing down at Fort Bragg to jump. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's incredible. <laughs> it's scared every time Tony jumps. She goes, Don't tell me. Don't tell yeah, it just, yeah. It, it's a kick. It's, <laughs> and I always joke that Lorana only jumped at eight, 800 feet. I did 13,000. So. <laughs> Yeah, he did the yeah. quick and empty. That's a run. That's a run. Yeah, those are tough. Yeah. yeah. So I just kind of hung up to my guy and I was good to go. So I said, it's easy for me. Yeah. So really, I do things to right. make a positive out of what happened. And never forget. I, I just, I was so low, you'll get married again. You'll, and it's like, but even if I, that's never going to be replaced. That's no. not, I can't. And, um, I said, I already have the best. What can I do? Yeah. Can you imagine the poor schmuck who tries to get involved? I'll be like, ah, you're being, in, you know, compared to. It. Yeah. yeah so. but there's something out there, and I'm very passionate about you living the greatest country in the world. And I know it, and we are so blessed with so many wonderful things given to us. And, um, my stepsister wrote me last night she goes thank you for the wrong sacrifice because I can sit here on a Saturday night and do whatever I want to and not have someone tell me what to watch or what to right. eat 